think we got a pretty good idea how this rookie class is going to turn out. Most versatile defender yeah. this year's class. Who do you see? Hamilton, you yeah. know, for the yeah. Ravens. Yeah. Because he can play four different positions on the defense. The 2022 NFL Draft class is intriguing, so here are five NFL rookies that are set to go off in 2022, and five that will play well below expectations. Go off. Aiden Hutchinson. Many expected Hutchinson to be the top selection of the draft, but the Jacksonville Jaguars instead opted to bet on Trayvon Walker's high upside. You know who's not complaining? The Detroit Lions. They were thrilled to take the Michigan product and Plymouth native at number two overall. Among all defensive rookies, none of them looked more NFL ready than the Heisman Trophy runner-up. Hutchinson's skill set and style of play perfectly suits the scrappy, feisty, kneecap-biting identity that head coach Dan Campbell wants to implement. And Hutchinson should succeed right away is Detroit's new go-to pass rusher. Hutchinson logged 14 sacks in his final season at Michigan. The Lions had one of the NFL's worst run-stopping and pass-rushing units a year ago, but Hutchinson alone is gonna help change that. We aren't here to tell you that Hutchinson will push for the league lead in sacks, but double-digit sacks certainly isn't out of the question. If he can hit that mark, the Defensive Rookie of the Year should be his. 2022 is gonna be another year of pain for Lions fans. But Hutchinson will give this franchise a spark as well as a glimpse of their promising long-term future. Disappoint. Trayvon Walker. Let's be real. In most other recent drafts, Walker isn't even a top five selection. But this was not the best draft class for quarterbacks. Man, the Jaguars, owners of the number one pick for the second straight year, drafted Trevor Lawrence first overall in 2021. And they retained offensive tackle Cam Robinson this offseason, essentially eliminating the possibility of them drafting one of the top O linemen. And so, in a rather surprising move, the Jaguars decided to take a chance on the Georgia Bulldogs standout. Whereas Hutchinson is a near sure thing to succeed, the Walker pick is enticing in that it'll either be a big time boom or a big time bust. Nowhere in between. And while we aren't saying that Walker is destined to be a bust, Jaguars fans should keep expectations minimal for the 2021 national champion. Even if Walker hits his ceiling, it's probably going to take a year or two for him to figure things out at the NFL level. Walker had just 9.5 sacks in his three collegiate seasons. So it would seem like even five sacks as an NFL rookie would be a bit of a stretch for him. Outside of young fan on pass rusher Josh Allen, the Jaguars are lacking true difference makers on defense. That doesn't bode well for Walker, who may only be used as a rotational player in year one. 2022 is a year of learning for Walker. This is not the year where he goes off and shows signs of stardom. So, please, keep your expectations reasonable. Go off, Chris Olave. The New Orleans Saints traded twice, first with the Philadelphia Eagles, then with the Washington Commanders, so they could come away with two first-rounders in this year's draft. With the number 11 selection, the Saints selected Ohio State receiver Chris Olave. Though many pundits were critical of the franchise's decision to go all-in at the draft, we endorse it 100%. The Saints had the league's worst receiving room last year. A healthy returning Michael Thomas alone makes a huge difference. But Olave has the skill set to be the new WR1 receiver in NOLA. He is tailor-made for this Saints offense. Olave is an elite deep threat and a burner whose slick vertical routes should mesh well with Jameis Winston's big arm. Olave is also a one-on-one -on -one matchup nightmare in the red zone, having racked up 35 touchdowns in his four NCAA seasons. After drafting Olave, the Saints signed Pro Bowl wideout Jarvis Landry. That gives him three potential game-changing pass catchers as opposed to zero. Thomas, Landry, and star running back Alvin Kamara will command much of the attention from opposing defenses, allowing Olave to sneak behind defenders on those home run passes. Olave is going to do wonders in this offense, early and often. Disappoint. Wandale Robinson. This isn't so much a knock against Robinson, but more so the New York Giants' decision to reach for him in round two, especially considering that they have a very crowded wide receiver room as it is. With the number 43 selection, the G-Men took the Kentucky wideout despite having other pressing needs on their roster. And with all due respect to Robinson, the Giants already have Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, Kadarius Toney, and two-way running back Saquon Barkley as pass catchers for Daniel Jones. So where exactly is Robinson? 
Watson going to get his targets? It's not like Daniel Jones is Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. He barely completes enough passes to keep two wideouts satisfied, let alone four or five. Robinson had a monster final season at Kentucky because, quite frankly, there weren't any other impactful receivers to compete for targets. That's simply not the case in New York, though. And with Jones in a make-or-break year, the Giants need guys who can produce right away. And that could leave Robinson as the odd man out in 2022. Go off, James Cook. Devin Singletary and Zach Moss haven't panned out as hoped, so GM Brandon Bean had an easy choice to take James Cook, brother of Minnesota Vikings star RB Dalvin Cook, when he was available in the number 63 spot of the draft. Cook had the skill set to be a first round pick, but of course, NFL teams are hesitant to spend high end picks on the devalued position these days. Understandable, but that made Cook a bargain at number 63. Cook should get every opportunity to take over as the new RB1 in Buffalo. Josh Allen is a five-star dual-threat quarterback, so defenses will be constantly focusing on him, which should open up plenty of holes for Cook. The Bills had a prolific offense last year, despite lacking game-changing running backs to complement Allen's two-way game. Now, they have the explosive Cook to change all that. In other words, it's gonna be a fun year for Cook in the Bills offense. Disappoint, Drake London. The Atlanta Falcons had a ton of pressing needs at the draft. Ultimately, however, they couldn't pass up on the chance to take big USC wideout Drake London in the number eight slot. Now, it made sense. The Falcons need to replace Calvin Ridley, who's unlikely to play in Atlanta again. Plus, the pairing of London and rising star tight end Kyle Pitts will be a nightmare for opposing defenses. But London is one prospect you'll want to keep expectations reasonable for in year one. If the Falcons still had Matt Ryan, we'd have very little doubt that London would go off right away. Instead, London will be catching passes from Marcus Mariota, who's merely a below-average QB. And with Mariota and Corderell Patterson in the fold, you know Arthur Smith will be running the ball a lot more. Mariota's style isn't that of a QB who loves throwing the 50-50 balls up to his targets. And you know that Pitts, not London, will be Atlanta's go-to pass catcher in 2022. London has the makings to be a star, no doubt. But don't expect him to go off immediately as a rookie. He's gonna need some time to come together. Go off, Kyle Hamilton. Many scouts and draft gurus graded Hamilton as a top five prospect in this class. But of course, teams rarely spend high-end selections on a safety, so Hamilton had to wait until the number 14 selection to hear his name called. The do-it-all linebacker was taken by the Baltimore Ravens, which is simply unfair because of how perfect the fit is. The Ravens already boasted arguably the NFL's best secondary, featuring all-pro corners Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters to go along with the safety duo of Marcus Williams and Chuck Clark. Hamilton truly does it all. He's an elite cover man with great size and range, capable of going up one-on-one -on -one against the opposition's tight ends and bigger receivers. Does that sound like a typical Baltimore Ravens defensive back to anyone else? When healthy, the Ravens' pass defense is always a top five unit, and now they have one of the best safety prospects in years to complement their all-star cornerback duo. Hamilton will help in coverage, and he should rack up the turnovers on this aggressive defense. Do not be surprised if he's a pro bowler or even an all-pro as a rookie. Hamilton's ceiling is through the roof, and Baltimore is the perfect team to maximize his talents right away. Disappoint. Kayvon Thibodeau. At several points throughout the 2028 NCAA season, many projected the Oregon product to go first overall. Going number one overall, I think is hands down the best player in this draft and who was the best player coming out of high school is Kayvon Thibodeau. But questions about Thibodeau's work ethic came into focus and some doubted that he'd even be a top 10 pick. The Giants wound up using the number five selection on Thibodeau. Two picks later, they selected Alabama offensive tackle Evan Neal, seventh overall. Now, we loved the Neal pick and expect him to make an impact right away. But Thibodeau is gonna need a year or two of polishing before he actually grows into a disruptive pass rusher if he even gets to that level. The G-men are gonna need to be patient with Thibodeau. Don't be surprised if he only plays around 60% of the team's defensive snaps as a rookie. He is not gonna go off right away, and anyone who expects it is setting themselves up for huge disappointment. This is a year of learning for Thibodeau more than anything else. Go off, Christian Watson. 
After trading away Devontae Adams to the Las Vegas Raiders, it was easy to assume that the Green Bay Packers would use one of their two first-rounders on a wide receiver. Instead, they doubled down on the front seven and waited until round two to select North Dakota State speedster Christian Watson. And, well, let's just say, better late than never. The number 34 overall selection immediately slots in as the new number one wideout in Green Bay. And he only has back-to-back -back MVP Aaron Rodgers feeding him the ball. Rodgers has been getting it done with day two and three draft picks throughout his entire career. We're talking guys like Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, and of course, the aforementioned Devontae Adams. Watson has a tremendous skill set. He's blessed with lightning quick speed for a man who's 6'5 and 208 pounds. Be it on the short passes, on the deep balls, or in the end zone, Watson is gonna make plays all over the field for A-Rod. It's not like Alan Lazard or Sammy Watkins are going to overtake Watson as the lead receiver in Green Bay. Neither of them even come close to matching his overall talents. Consider Watson a sleeper for Offensive Rookie of the Year honors. He is perfectly positioned to go off in year one. Disappoint, Traylon Burks. The Tennessee Titans shocked the football world when they traded away star whiteout A.J. Brown to the Philadelphia Eagles. GM John Robinson replaced Brown by taking Arkansas whiteout Traylon Burks with the number 18 selection, which they acquired in a trade with Philly. We're not suggesting that Burks will be a complete bust, but fair or not, he's going to be compared to Brown in 2022 and beyond. I wouldn't say, um, you know, like I'm his replacement, but at the same time, you know, I'm just... Like I said, I'm just thankful for the opportunity that they believed in me to make that trade and, um, you know, believe in me to uh, go out there and um, represent that organization like it's supposed to be represented. And, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Well, don't expect Burks to just step in and replace Brown's production right away. He's going to have to go up against the opposition's number one corner every week, including All-Pro corner Stephon Gilmore of the Indianapolis Colts and prized Houston Texans rookie Derek Stingley Jr. twice each. Secondly, he'll have to compete with fellow newcomer Robert Woods for targets. And of course, the offense still runs entirely through running back phenom Derrick Henry, provided that he's healthy. So you really shouldn't expect Burks to piece together 1,000 yards in a Pro Bowl appearance. He's got the ability to become that type of player over time, but it's not going to happen in year one. As it stands, Titans fans should be happy if Burks produces something closer to 500 or 600 yards. But which other NFL rookies will go off in 2022? And which ones are bound to disappoint? Join us in the comment section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.